I don't believe we're alone in the universe. The native cultures and, you know, if they say they've been seeing things for years, such as Bigfoot, UFOs, or whatever. I've never seen a Bigfoot, but I have seen a, some people call them UFOs. I've seen them with my own eyes. They're out there. Alaska is a land of many mysteries. Among the rugged mountains, dense forests, and towering glaciers is a mysterious stretch of wilderness where more than 16,000 people have disappeared since 1988. We are talking about the Alaska Triangle, which starts from Juneau in the south to Anchorage in the middle, all the way up to Yukiovich at the most northern point in Alaska. This triangle is also considered a hotspot for UFO sightings, but the report received from Seward is in a league of its own. Just 127 miles south of Anchorage, hundreds of people saw a massive UFO hovering in the sky for hours. The sight was so unbelievable and witnessed by so many that to this day, the people remember it in hushed tones. Experts and eyewitnesses have spent decades trying to unlock the mysteries of the Alaska Triangle, a remote area infamous for alien abductions, Bigfoot sightings, paranormal phenomena, and vanishing airplanes. The Triangle holds some of the world's deepest waters, with the Gulf of Alaska reaching down to astonishing depths of 26,000 feet. People have reported multiple UFO sightings around Alaska, but most of them have been for a short period and observed by one or two eyewitnesses. This is why the sighting in Seward is so astronomical. Bill Sleesman is a dock manager at the Resurrection Bay and a resident of Seward for many decades. His years in the icy land have been filled with stories of paranormal beings and extraterrestrials carried on through folklore. This has helped cement his belief in life other than human civilization. Still, he had never imagined that he would witness something so extraordinary that his life would be changed forever. One day, Sleesman was sitting in his cabin when he heard the sound of a military helicopter very close to his home. He stepped outside with his binoculars in hand to get a better look, and sure enough, there was a black helicopter hovering almost above his cabin. Although finding a U.S. military helicopter in the skies was nothing unusual for people living in Alaska, this chopper looked different. It was completely black without any markings or writings, making it almost impossible to determine who it belonged to. But more than the helicopter's appearance, its movement or lack of it struck him as odd. The chopper was not moving forward or backward, but simply hovering in the air as if deciding its next course of action. Sleesman found that very odd, but nothing prepared him for what he saw when he turned around to return to his home. Right above his cabin was a Jiang flying object, almost resembling a battleship. The object was grayish silver, almost 1,500 to 2,000 feet long and 600 feet across. Most UFOs have been witnessed in the dark, which is why eyewitnesses often have difficulty understanding the object they're looking at. However, it was daytime when Sleesman spotted this mysterious and terrifying flying object, allowing him to notice the small details that could have been easily missed at night. According to Sleesman, the UFO had a diamond-like crystal at the bottom emitting a blue-white-reddish light. The sight was mesmerizing but equally disturbing as this massive alien object was hovering just about a quarter mile from Sleesman's cabin. But despite the potential implications of such a UFO sighting, he could not peel his eyes off it. Before he could look away, he felt a weird sensation in his body. He described it as an unusual energy that almost felt like his body was humming. It was unlike anything he had ever experienced before. Eventually, he turned around from the UFO and went inside his house. He picked up the phone and began ringing his neighbors to ask if they could see the giant UFO above his home. After all, it was important for him to validate his observation because it truly was unbelievable. Fortunately, he wasn't the only one who could see the large UFO in the sky. His neighbors confirmed that they were also looking at it. Sleesman grabbed a chair and headed back outside, determined to keep an eye on the object. He set his chair in the snow and began staring at the object. Several hours passed, but he wasn't sure how many. After that, he lost all track of time and woke up inside his home. He wasn't sure when or how he came inside and dozed off. He seemed to have no recollection of the time that had passed. The only thing he was absolutely sure of was that the object he saw was not from this world. It was definitely extraterrestrial. The next day, when he went back to work, he heard several people talking about the strange flying object that had suddenly appeared in the skies. In fact, several people reported witnessing bizarre lights in the sky throughout the night. 
Countless UFO sightings have been reported in Alaska over the years, and many experts believe these sightings may be linked to the rumored alien base in Mount Hayes. This connection was first uncovered by Pat Price, a brilliant psychic and remote viewer who worked with the CIA during the Cold War. The CIA once gave Pat coordinates for a site in Russia, but as he tried to project his consciousness there, something kept pulling his focus from the target. It was a location in Alaska, Mount Hayes. But this was really surprising because that area was completely desolate and remote, with no roads or civilization for miles. It was literally in the middle of a frozen wasteland. He didn't disclose his attraction to Mount Hayes, but he projected back to the mountains once he was alone. There was nothing on the surface, yet he could feel the presence of something there. So he projected his consciousness into the mountain, and what he saw there blew his mind. It was a massive base equipped with technology so advanced that he couldn't comprehend its application. There were computers, consoles, equipment, and machinery. But he felt like a caveman gaping at technology he couldn't understand. Then he saw the operators of the machines who looked almost human but with thin, large heads. They were busy working on something, but the most shocking part was that they were joined by humans who worked alongside the extraterrestrials. He had a feeling he wasn't safe there and returned to his actual location. Three days later, he was found dead in his hotel room. No one knew what happened to him. However, he had documented all his research, which was later handed over to Skip Atwater, who became the head of operations for the CIA's remote viewing project in 1980. When Skip went through the files, he couldn't believe what he was looking at. One of the locations Pat projected to was a secret alien base under Mount Hayes in Alaska. The other mountains where he believed more alien bases existed were Mount Puro in Spain, Mount Inyangani in Zimbabwe, and Mount Zeal in Australia. Skip hired another remote viewer, Joseph McMoneagle, to verify this incredible information. Once Joseph projected his consciousness to the coordinates given by Skip, he too found a base inside the mountain. All the pipes masses of electronics. The things he saw inside were so foreign to him that he had trouble putting them into words. It was the same advanced technology Pat had seen earlier. Joseph noticed that the base was under a large dome, and on top of that was an emitter sending vast amounts of energy into space. Believe it or not, Joseph found alien bases in all the locations Pat had highlighted in his research. What do you think about Pat and Joseph's discovery? Is there an alien base in Alaska that attracts UFOs all year round? And could it be the reason why Sleesman and hundreds of others like him witnessed a UFO as large as a battleship in Seward? Tell us your opinions in the comments below. Smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and press the notification bell for more videos.